Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Chris. Today I'm going to give you an overview of the TrueKit 4 meter inflatable catamaran, its pros and cons, and why I think you should consider it in terms of a tinny, and especially a rooftop tinny here in Australia. Stick around. All right, so I'm going to start with a quick rundown of the TrueKit itself. So TrueKit's a New Zealand boat designer. This is the 4 meter version, which is the largest of three different sizes that they offer. This is a catamaran. They also offer like a normal sort of dinghy style shape, but I'll tell you later why I went with the cat design. Now dimensions are 400 centimeters long by 180 centimeters wide. It only weighs 45 kilograms and packs up into a bag. It is made from a German Valmex fabric, which is a type of PVC, and it has thermo welded seams. Uh, it's not glued together at all. It has an aluminium transom with grated vents to allow water flow right through the entire length of the boat. And the transom itself is rated for a 20 horsepower motor. I run a 20 horsepower Yamaha two-stroke. You can obviously run lower than that as well. Now the boat itself comes with aluminium seat, aluminium oars, but then you can buy extras such as a bimini shade, the quick lock launching wheels, which we have, that makes it great for launching on and off the beach, and a bridle strap that you can see in the front, and that's for me carrying it around the place. Now it has a carrying capacity of 700 kilograms, and it can carry a maximum of six people on board. It also has a bunch of railblazer ports on the boat itself, and you can add more if you chose to. So you can attach things like the oars themselves, you can attach things like the GoPro arm, the boom, which I have on the back and use all the time. And you can also attach fishing rod holders, cup holders, things like that. Now I've owned the boat for just over a year and I've used it for a ton of missions, mostly for solo spearfishing, uh, island camping missions far offshore and for just cruising around with my partner and baby. So some places we've been in it is the Whit Sundays. We've been to some islands in the Great Barrier Reef. We recently went to Dirk Hartog and the Ningaloo. The furthest I've taken is 40 kilometers offshore for an overnight camping mission. Actually got a video of that where a fish unfortunately bit the tip of my finger off while I was out there. We had to travel 40 kilometers back inshore. One of the things I love about this boat is that it is super stable on the water, handles rough waves and swell really, really well. And it's just, it's super solid. So as you can see, like I can stand up, you could get all six passengers to easily stand up on the side of it and it won't tip. It's got an incredibly shallow draft to it. So you can just drag it straight onto a beach. You can go over really, really shallow bommies, reef, things like that. I'll talk to you a little bit more now about the pros and cons of the boat, and then we'll move on to some considerations. All right, so before I crack into the pros, cons, and considerations, just mention the price. So it is $3,860. When I post this video, that's Australian dollars. Now I've mentioned some of the pros, but just a few more, especially in particular for my setup. A, the big one that I love about it is I don't have to have a trailer. So that means that I don't have to have the registration costs. 
I don't have to have the hassle of towing, so the longer parking spaces, etc., turning circles, everything. I mean, we do drive a truck, so that wouldn't help us at all. And also consideration must be made that what you often see when vehicles are stranded on the side of the road out remote, it's often the trailer that's caused it. Because we don't have one, I don't have to worry about that at all. So we don't have the maintenance on that, don't have the stress of having that break. Another big consideration is I don't have to turn around in soft boggy sand and launch a boat off a trailer. Definitely with our weight, I mean we're a 10 ton truck so if I can minimize that that would be great. I'm also not a fan of submerging parts of the vehicle in salt water when I'm launching the boat and have to immediately wash off. So yeah, great thing about us having this boat is that we can just set it up here and then I can just walk it out to the water which is really great. Another big pro for us is that because it is so shallow in the water I can just drive it straight up onto beaches. I don't have to worry so much about running into sort of submerged rocks, uh, reef, things like that. I mean, obviously I do have to take into consideration, but I mean, this thing is so shallow, it's amazing. Now, some of the cons, things that I don't like about the boat. Firstly, it is a bit of a setup time. I mean, I'm just using the hand pump. I'll grab that now. This is the hand pump here that came with the boat. That has taken me 15 minutes to set up the boat and I was doing it pretty fast. Like it's not a real fun job, it does start to hurt your lower back no matter kind of what stance you go into. So the ob obvious consideration if you're thinking of an inflatable boat is to get yourself an electric pump. Sometimes we use the onboard air system of our Unimog to pump it up, but I like to be able to move the boat closer to the water, usually which is further away from our camp, just so that I don't have to carry it around too much and have too much weight to deal with. So that's one of the cons. Another con we've noticed after having a year on top of our vehicle and its bag, the bag is completely obliterated. So I knew it wasn't going to be heavy duty. It's kind of more designed, I think, to be stored in say like a garage or definitely undercover. So I would say I'll have some sort of canvas bag made up for it in the very near future to protect the boat just from the sun and the elements and, and the dust, things like that. Now the bag that the floor itself comes in, that's been fine, but that normally in our setup sits underneath the boat. Now another con, and this is sort of more specific to my general setup, is that I have to have the motor, the 20 horsepower Yamaha, stuffed inside our garage. Now if I was towing a boat, I would probably have the motor stored on the back of the, say, tinny for instance. Now one easy way around that is I can have a mount made up for the back of the truck, but obviously that's a cost, just something to consider as you do still have a motor to deal with. But for a boat like this, especially if you're using it just as a tender or a little runabout, is you could run a little electric trolling motor. Because it's only 45 kilos and the thing runs through the water really nice, uh, you don't have to have a really powerful motor. Now in terms of how the actual boat itself is held up, it's held up awesomely. And I've done a bunch of dodgy stuff in it really. So one of the considerations is, I think the design of the aluminium seat could be better. Sort of where it, it, where it grabs into the boat, I guess I'm quite heavy and if I'm bouncing around in, in heavy swell, it started to really flex this place that the seat sort of connects into like a nylon strap system. Not a big fan of it. And the plastic underneath the seat itself has taken a real hiding. So that's definitely something that could be improved. And another thing that happened, which isn't actually from the boat manufacturer itself, is really early on one of my Railblazer ports was kind of faulty. So I'm going to replace that and put on a different one, but you can just buy these from say BCF uh, or easily online. So that's a quick fix. Other than that, the boat has been awesome and we've had it outside on the roof of the truck. So it's not like it's been really well looked after. I don't wash it down after use. I just give it a bit of a wipe if there's a bunch of fish blood on it. Uh, but yeah, it's handled it great. But now I just want to move on from talking about the true kit itself and just sort of mention why you might want to consider this instead of a tinny roof topper or a tinny on the trailer. Now if you're not from Australia, tinny is a aluminium boat, they're small, they're quite light and they're kind of just the traditional Australian way of getting on the water. But I think it's outdated. I really think something like this is a better option for a lot of people. Now, if you're unfamiliar with a roof topper, it's basically a winching system where you slide the tinny upside down on top of a forward drive. Now, one of the big cons about that, of course, is that you've got your weight of your tinny, which is definitely much more than 45 kilograms. You've got that at the worst place on your vehicle, which is up high. So that's changed your center of gravity, made it more dangerous. Not to mention that it really loads your roof as well, in some cases too much so. And the other one is that it has lifted your profile, so your drag resistance, 
massively. So you've lifted your vehicle up, you're now using more fuel because you've just made a big brick, basically like what I drive. <laughs> so one of the benefits of this is it packs sound really nice and small and either yourself or you and one other person can easily get this up and onto your roof. And it, it's not big. Plus, that gives you more room on your roof for other things, so like you know your max tracks, your fuel caddies, whatever you need up there, swag, rooftop tent. So I think that's a big consideration. Now, say you have a caravan, you can easily probably store this on the back of your caravan. Plus, you've got to deal with a motor, of course, but great for caravanners, great for truck owners. Now, a lot of, I know a lot of the Isuzu NPS trucks are becoming really popular here in Australia. Now, this would be a great boat to have for that. So yeah, definitely something to keep in mind is just the fact that it's just a much easier option in many ways. Not only that, it's so light, and if you get the quick clock launching wheels, you can just drag it to the beach from anywhere. You don't actually have to go down to a ramp, because in some places around the country, you do kind of need to be at a ramp to launch a tinny. Obviously, there's some beaches you don't have to. This makes that much easier. Like I said earlier, you don't have to worry about bogging your vehicle when you're launching it, and you don't have to get salt water on your forward drive as well. All right, so that sort of wraps up kind of mainly what I wanted to talk about today. Some other considerations to make is uh, I chose the catamaran design mainly for spear fishing, so I can sort of slide on and off really easily. You don't have to go off that if you're using, a, say, a tender on a yacht or whatever. You can have the fully enclosed, normal style kind of dinghy. There are other manufacturers out there. I really like the True Kit, mainly because I'm Kiwi. They're a Kiwi company. And just the whole design of it works really well. So far, been unbelievably happy with it. I think another big consideration as well is in heavy swell and choppy seas, this holds the water much nicer than a tinny. A tinny, you get a lot of rock back and forth, feels much more dangerous. This, not at all. It just doesn't bob. When swell sitting it sideways, it just rides it up and straight back down, nice and flat. You can sort of see why surf lifesavers choose this style of a boat instead of a tinny for saving people to getting through really strong, brutal swell and waves. All right, that about wraps it up. Thank you so much for listening to me ramble, but uh, hopefully you've learned a thing or two, or maybe it's given you a consideration to flag, get rid of that tinny of yours, keep the motor, chuck it on the back of this, and just rip it.